and welcome back to part two of building a new and improved turbo manifold for my M104 turbo swapped W203. If you missed the video last week, part one of building a new manifold, basically this is the manifold I've been running on the car for three years, a log style manifold. Now this thing worked great, but there is a lot of room for improvement. So we'll be throwing this one in the bin and building a new, better flowing manifold. As you can see, I have done a bit more work to this manifold. So we ended off last week's video with uh, six main runners. So one and a half inch, 90 degrees running into two collectors. Then I went ahead and added a two inch, 90 and another two inch, 90 to that. And then for the rear three cylinders as well, a 90 and a 90. Then I got the turbo flange welded on there and then the turbo will mount on over there. So now I have these two pieces bolted to the welding table just to make it easier to figure out the final piece of the puzzle, which is this piece. So this is another two inch tube with a three millimeter wall thickness and that will slide in over here. Oh, it stays. <laughs> Now the tricky thing is with welding is especially if your gaps aren't like perfect um, When I go ahead and weld this thing it might move around So if it moves one millimeter over here in this corner It might move five millimeters and then everything is going to be way off So I think the best plan of action is to take out the welding table It's not the easiest thing that auger model is super freaking heavy but it is a portable welder, so I am able to move it around. So I want to get that outside to the car and then I'll tack weld this piece on there, get it fully welded, and then we can move on to the fun stuff. Mounting the turbo, still need to figure out the wastegate, but that won't be too difficult. Then we can also do the screamer pipe for the wastegate and then start on those water lines for the turbo. Oh, and the down pipe, of course. But let's get this thing moved to out there get started. Good morning so it's the next day and i'm glad to be done with adding that final little piece to the manifold itself way too much work for what it was but it's done and we can move on next up was figuring out where i want to get the wastegate mounted so for those of you who don't know what a wastegate is 
this basically controls your boost so it's all in the name the exhaust gases you won't be needing this gets rid of it to keep your boost level where you want it so as you go up in rpm there's more exhaust pressure and then once you get to let's say 6 psi or 7 psi this does have a 7 psi spring in it then it'll open up and divert those extra exhaust gases ideally keeping the boost level the same right through the rpm range something like that now I chose this location for two reasons. Number one being the efficiency of the wastegate. So let's say this is your exhaust and the flow direction is this way. Your engine is here, end of the exhaust is over here. And the way you want to get your wastegate mounted is at a bit of an angle, like a 45 degree angle, so that the exhaust gases can go or flow nicely into it. If you have it like at a 90, or worst case scenario when you have it like this it's not going to be very efficient and the exhaust gases can't really get to it i mean it it probably will but it's recommended to have it at a bit of an angle so that's why i chose this location the other reason is well i like it if the car has a wastegate i want to be able to see the wastegate so after figuring that out i could make the hole in the manifold to get this mounted install wastegate check ready to rock and roll so i will do the screamer pipe out of that once we get done with the down pipe which we'll get into next but another thing i didn't mention before why i have the turbo clocked like this and in the position it is is so that i can still run a air filter this is more of a sleeper daily than a full-blown race car so we do need an air filter a couple of more things is i probably need to get some heat shielding in that area and then on those flanges even though i did my best to keep them as flat as possible the best thing will be to get those surfaces decked so that it's nice and flush up against the head and then i also might do an exhaust wrap i don't know yet still a lot of things to decide on a lot of ways to skin a cat <laughs> but for the most part i'm very happy with the results so far but let's move on to that downpipe so here i have the old downpipe obviously that's not gonna work with the new setup so we need to change that so i'm thinking i'll cut it off in this area over here because i do want to have the o2 bong still in there so that's gonna just be the easiest cut it off over here somewhere or maybe over here i don't know yet and then i do want to get that flange off there reuse that but i do have a couple of 76 mil stainless that i want to do the downpipe with again no real reason for that just it might look kind of cool so let's build a downpipe mini crocodile run bitch run <laughs>
Now, maybe I am being a bit delusional because I just spent the last two weeks of my life creating this, but I'm stoked on how good this turned out. I mean, compared to my first turbo manifold, this one turned out way more legit and should be a big improvement. Can you imagine my third attempt, maybe one day at a turbo manifold? I don't know, just saying, that is the dream. Anyway, as you saw, I got the downpipe done. So the first part is stainless steel and then the second part is just mild steel because it's a bit close to this uh, valve cover and its seal. A bit too close for comfort because there is going to be a lot of heat in this area. I did also paint everything to keep it from rusting for now, but that won't last very long because of all the heat. That's also why I said I need to figure out some kind of heat wrap or heat shielding. I don't know. We'll still get to all that. And then I also got that screamer pipe knocked out. So that just goes straight down to the ground and makes all the cool noises. Another thing, the more I look at this, um, that wastegate might be sitting a bit too high. I don't know, I can't really decide. Maybe I'll get used to it, but definitely not a perfect setup, but way better than it was before. So this was a very big step I wanted to get out of the way before getting into a few other smaller upgrades like adding a 76 mm throttle body to the intake that I built. The current setup is still running the 67 millimeter stock M104 throttle body, I think. I think it's a 67. And then another thing is I want to do a few upgrades to the intercooler system and its piping. Um, nothing major, just some small improvements. And then I know I said I'll get those coolant lines into the turbo, but I'm still wrapping my head around the whole cooling system because that's also going to be changed up a bit. Just it was a mess before and I wanted to get it nice and clean and better looking. But with that being said, I'm going to take a break on this one for a little bit and spend the next week or two getting back to work on this thing, which is closer to driving than you might think. I probably shouldn't be saying that, but yes, I basically need to figure out the cooling system the power steering and a couple of small details which will probably be a lot of work but we'll get there not that much to do to have this thing up and driving and i'm really excited to drive this thing lightweight big engine perfect combination and hopefully one day we can add some boost and really wake this thing up for now hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please hit that like button and then i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching peace